your racing times get faster over the past two to three years. I'm always talking about patience as runners. The hay is in the barn as the saying goes. Okay, today's run, the last longer run of this entire Hamburg now DGR virtual races, the marathon races that are coming up this weekend. It's amazing. What a crazy, like who would have thunked at the beginning of this training block in January that, wow, gosh, nobody could have predicted what's happening right now. But sure enough, this is the, this is the reality and we're going to get this marathon done together. Half marathon, 10K, 5K, it's exciting. So today, I did. I didn't do any filming because I needed to be efficient. Also, I want to dive right into the half marathon discussion, how I was able to drop my time so much over the past 18 months. I'll get into that in a minute. But first, today's run was the last six miles of my marathon course for Sunday morning. And by the way, isn't it kind of nice? You don't think about it, but sometimes like getting to the starting line of a race can be a, a little stressful at times. Maybe you hit traffic on the way. Maybe you oversleep. Who knows? Maybe you can't find your bib number, but like on Sunday, for me, Sunday morning, you can you, you can get out the door whenever you want. You know what? You could just sip your coffee. It's going to be nice. So uh, anyway, here we go. So last six miles, uh, about seven minutes a mile for uh, today's run for 12 miles. So I went out six miles and then back six miles. And I feel so confident now in the course it feels, it's like a huge relief. Again, I'm a big fan of previewing the course as much of the course as possible. And now I've previewed the entire 26 miles um, over the, you know, from this entire training block, just kind of taking it section by section. So I feel good and it's a good mental relief knowing that I'm not gonna get lost and uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm excited. Hope you're excited. I, oh my goodness, I think we're I think we're about to pass 2,000 registered runners. So it's amazing. So obviously, you all are spreading the word because uh, the registrations keep going up. And uh, I want to give you a little background as to how I how, what I believe I've been able to go from that 111, 112 range for my half marathon PR in in late 2018 to 18 months later, fast forward to the present, to basically a 106, 107 uh, half marathon PR. And like, what's going on here? Considering, again, I'm not really a, a um, I'm not really a speed guy, okay? So let me give you a little background real quick. And, you know, forgive me if you've heard this before, but I think it's important because there's always new subscribers coming on board. Welcome, by the way. Uh, but I want to give you the background on my time at the University of Colorado and then transitioning to the mountain running and then transitioning to uh, the U.S. Olympic trials, et cetera, et cetera, attempting to get to the U.S. Olympic trials. Okay, here we go. So I went to, I walked on to the University of Colorado's cross country and track team in 2005, my sophomore year of college. I was, I, I, Wetmore let me on somehow, but he let me on and I went from uh, 65. So when I walked onto the team, for all the high schoolers out there watching, just so you know, I was training right at about 70 miles a week, okay? Uh, that was the volume I was training at per week when I walked on, all right? Just so you know. And then over the next three to four years, uh, Wetmore built my volume up slowly, very smart, okay? Basically 10 miles per year. So from 70 to 80, 80 to 90, and then eventually landing in that 90 to 100 miles a week range as a senior at the University of Colorado, all right? And then I graduated, um, took time off, but I decided to hop in a, in a half marathon. And this is what's this is where it gets crazy, everybody, but I hopped in a half marathon, the Colfax Half Marathon here at Elevation, um, here in Denver. And I think I ran, I, I already, I showed this to you a couple weeks ago, but I think I ran like 119. You know, not very fast for me. Um, I ran 119 training at about 40 miles a week. So again, pretty low volume after the University of Colorado. And again, I just needed a break. Now, what's crazy is that after that half marathon, everybody, my next road race, and I do believe I'm correct in saying this, I was just really going back into the archive and looking at Strava, looking at all my bib numbers. My next road race was nine years later at the Amsterdam Marathon. What? It's crazy. So after that half marathon, I frankly, everybody, I took two to three years of time off 
and very, 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 very low volume running, meaning 10 miles a week, 30 miles a week. I needed a mental and physical break, and I'm so glad that I did. Um, what? Yeah, I just, I just needed a break, and you know, also I was getting married and having, you know, Joseph was born and buying a house, and all these things were happening. So I was just not running very much. I believe it was two to three years. Fast forwarding to 2016, 2017, roughly. Uh, my brother Joseph, shout out to Joseph. He basically, I'm giving him a lot of credit because he. Kind of, he basically kind of reignited my passion for running. Um, he he kind of gave me the spark again by basically inviting me to discover mountain running, um, particularly through this adventure called Nolan's 14. Okay, here's some footage of us training for Nolan's 14. It's a crazy mountain adventure. We, I've got vlogs on it here on the channel. And uh, through that invitation, I really kind of I rediscovered that, wait a minute, I can kind of still run decent and pretty fast. So I started to do mountain running and mountain racing, the Pikes Peak Ascent. Uh, but keep in mind, like this is seven years removed from the University of Colorado, okay? Now, uh, fast forwarding again to late 2018. This is, this is, it's all coming to a head here, okay? Bear with me. So, and I tell you this backstory just so you have the full picture on my half marathon progression to all right, so here's what's actually, this is, this is hilarious. All right, you ready for this? So here is a half of my original Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. This is amazing. So the shoe is released, you know, the Breaking 2 project with Kipchoge. It's a big deal. Uh, the carbon fiber plate, uh, you know, revolution is happening in the running scene. By the way, I'm doing daily vlogging from 2016 to the present. So all this old footage I have. Um, and so this is when I just started to um, make the transition on this YouTube channel a little more focused on running, okay? And frankly, I'm gonna say like the 4% flying it was a big reason that I think a lot of runners discovered this channel because people were intrigued by this shoe. So I decided after doing mountain running, for years at that point, like big mountain running, why don't I see what, and I was not ready for going out and racing a marathon, mentally or physically, but I did say to myself, okay, I'm gonna go to Wash Park in Denver, lace up in the 4% and just see what I can do, all right? So I believe in that time trial, I'm gonna try and find it on Strava, I believe I ran right around a 111, okay, roughly, all right? There it is on your screen if I can find it on Strava. And I was ec ecstatic because I was going from a 118, 119 half marathon down to a 111. Like I was I was a very, very happy with that. Um, so that was 2018. And now transitioning to the present, well, fast forward a year to 2019, I actually get serious about kind of serious about road racing and I tell myself you all saw the whole story unfold in 2019 me attempting to uh, qualify for the US Olympic team trials in the marathon um, you know the story I did not uh, run 219 uh, first of all the Cleveland Marathon ended up with a foot injury and then going to Amsterdam running the 10653 at sea level. I should also uh, clear, you know, Denver's at elevation. So I've heard that from Denver down to sea level, you can get around, you know, people are pretty generous. I think it's closer to closer to about six minutes, uh, six seconds per mile. Some people say it's like eight seconds, maybe even 10 seconds per mile. I don't know. Anyway, uh, you can run faster at sea level is the bottom line. So I ran 106.53 through the first half marathon in Amsterdam, Jason Butter, and I felt very, very, I was, I was again, blown, blown away that I was able to go from that 111 range down to 106. Well, now in this marathon training block, uh, what was it, three weeks ago? I did the time trial here solo at elevation um, and managed to run a 107.20. All right, so there's the backstory. Now, I want to talk to you about how I think 
that I've been able to do this, uh, what I believe is really, really helping me drop my half marathon time so, so much. And again, uh, this is not gonna be quite as applicable to 5Ks and 10Ks, but definitely to if you're passionate about running faster for half marathons and marathons, this has been what has worked for me. I've increased my aerobic capacity, meaning my endurance, my stamina. Uh, also, you know, I, I know I live at elevation. I feel fortunate about that. Uh, I know some people don't live at elevation, uh, even though I do think you can seek out elevation wherever you might live. Like even in like, okay, I'm just gonna throw out like Georgia. I know Georgia has some hills. Um, and, and I know it's not high altitude, but even just seeking out vertical, I think is a great, great thing for running. So I think one reason uh, that I've been running faster over the past 18 months, dropping my half marathon PR time, is I'm gonna call it my old man strength, right? There you go, my old man strength. What do I mean by that? I don't mean doing squats in the gym. I don't mean, um, frankly, doing any heavy weights in the gym. I mean getting into the mountains, seeking out vertical, um, yeah, that type of running, okay? Now, I'm, I'm gonna put a caveat on that in a second, all right? So that's point number one, is old man strength. Like, I'm getting stronger. Like, at the University of Colorado, we lifted. And I was, I, I thought I was pretty strong, but I'm telling you, everybody, the vertical experience over the past four years, I feel, I just feel in control of my body, if that may, I feel in control of my stride. It's such a, it's a, it's, it's a balance. It's not, um, you know, it's not gym strength. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a professional lifting coach and I'm not using the right terminology, but anyway, I just want to put it out there. Like I feel in control of my, of my stride of my body. Okay. That's point number one. Point number two. Yes. You know, the drill long threshold runs, long threshold runs. Okay. So what do I mean? You know, threshold runs. So to find your threshold pace, you take your 5k PR, uh, you divide it by three to get your mile, uh, average pace. And then you add that. I, <laughs> okay. You add 15 to 20 seconds. I like to keep it actually a little, a little closer, more that 10 to 15 seconds. So if you run, uh, let's just throw out 21 minutes for your 5k PR. That would be seven minutes a mile. So then your threshold pace would be about 720 to 730 per mile for your workouts. Okay. And what do I mean by long threshold runs? So for Amsterdam, my long threshold run was a half marathon. That was my quote unquote tune up race, uh, leading into the Amsterdam marathon. And sure enough, I ended up breaking my uh, half marathon PR by a lot. Granted, I was at sea level and on a very, very flat course, okay? So long threshold runs is point number two. Point number three, oh yeah, long runs, but I mean extra long runs, okay? So in college at CU, we did 20 mile long runs basically every Sunday, 18 to 20. Uh, the seniors did 20, sometimes 21, but now I am discovering as I've gotten older and stronger, and after years and years of being patient, that is a big hashtag patience, um, I feel really, really confident that my new long run distance, getting ready for marathons and half marathons, is no longer, uh, you often hear 20, you know, you wanna get your Boston qualifier, you need to run at least 20 miles in your long runs. I think that's great. But I think over time, and I'm talking years and years, that can be bumped up to that 21 to 23 range for your, uh, for your long runs. And uh, frankly, I, like, I feel really confident going into the half marathon, uh, the marathon this Sunday, because I hit three, uh, three 23 mile long runs in this training block. So anyway, just putting that out there, I'm really a big proponent of long, long run. And point number four, consistent plyometrics, all right? Consistent plyometrics, absolutely. Whether it's in the gym, whether it's in a park, wherever you're at, um, again, going back to your form, I am uh, so excited for racing in the future. And I'm gonna race on Sunday, of course, but racing against other runners in person just to see 
how my form and my stride and my, uh, my foot strike and cadence and all of that that goes into our biomechanics as runners, how we move our body, our arms, our legs, our, how we hold our head in position, how it will work um, uh, against other runners on the starting line, okay? So that is my fourth point is plyometrics. It's been so, uh, and I, I, I have not been perfect. I'm gonna be honest. I have not been perfect over the past, let's say, 12 months of sticking to my plyometrics as consistently as I would like, uh, but I aspire, right? I, we are, we're always aspiring as runners to get better and better. So that's my fourth point. Once again, stronger, not gym strength, just stronger, okay? Uh, long threshold runs, long, long runs, and plyometrics. Now, I'm gonna put a big, a big uh, note down here. Notice, I did not say interval training. Why? Because that has not been my reality. I have not done interval training very much. Although, I'm excited to do more, okay? Dabble more. Um, I'm just talking about 111 to 106, 107. Now, if I want to go from 106, 107 down to 104, hmm, maybe I'm going to need to incorporate more interval training into my next training blocks in the future. But right now, I have done, everybody, less than, less than 10 interval sessions over the past 18 months okay so again you all know like if you watch consistently i'm not a big proponent of interval training i'm more of a proponent of aerobic capacity long runs um of course threshold runs and yes so i did i anyway i just want to put that it's i was trying to think of something else but it's really that's how simple i i have kept it over the past eight months for my half marathon progression. And so with all that said, I know I just talked for a long time. Thanks for listening to that, but I, I hope you have a better grasp now on what I'm doing and kind of giving you more of that bigger picture, really 30,000 foot view from the University of Colorado all the way to the present, mixing in the mountains in the process, um, and now transitioning to the roads and just seeing like, okay, what's working and what have I not been doing as well? Hmm? question of the day and i realize we're all at different stages of life different stages of uh, stages of training uh but i do want to ask are you seeing your racing times get faster over the past two to three years i'm always talking about patience as runners and so oh so I, that's why i want to look at the bigger picture a two to three year window do you see your times getting faster? Because it is a game of patience, as I'm always saying. That's the question of the day. I'll be curious to hear. And if you want to share a little bit about your training uh, philosophy, how you train, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Half marathon PRs, onward and upward. Hey, hey, if you want to toss out your half marathon PR, I should have asked that as well. If you want to toss out your half marathon PR, please do. Please do all right butter my bread onward and upward we're gonna toss it back to uh we'll toss it back to the four percent testing testing out the four percent back in the day there it is there it is if you want to go back into the archive oh man good times good times on youtube all right thanks for being here thanks for watching seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow